So let's do an example using cake filtration. Uh, and this example is actually ta taken using data from five students, uh, names are known, at uh, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Uh, some data are found on, on the web. And just to remind ourselves, this is the linearized form of the filtration equation. Uh, you see that t divided by v equals a plus bv, and we should be able to plot something linear here. And uh, in my compendium, you find some more data, and here is just a few data points. You see t here, uh, minutes, and v in cubic meters. And they filtrated 940 kilogram per cubic meter slime slurry at uh, the pressure 135 uh, sorry, 138 kilopascal uh, in a unit with uh, an area of 0 0.058 square meters, and the viscosity was one millipascal second. And you see here that if you plot this, you get this bent curve like this. But what you should do uh, if you use this uh, linearized cake filtration uh, equation, you should uh, calculate t divided by v, and that's these numbers here. So instead of plotting t, uh, so v against t, we instead plot t divided by v against v. Uh, so note here that there is no time zero here because if we, if we use zero, uh, then t divided by v becomes zero divided by zero, which is not defined, so that's impossible. Uh, so t divided by v, you get this equation here. And just to remind ourselves, uh, orders of magnitude for the uh, for Rm uh, is typically 10 to the power of 10 uh, per meter, while the filtration resistance uh, depends on if it's very easily filtrated or very difficult to filtrate, so somewhere between 10 to the power of 9 and 10 to the power of 13. So let's try to calculate these. Uh, you can use um, Excel or Kaleidograph or MATLAB or whatever to to fit a, a square uh, to a linear line to this uh, so linear equation and if I include this uh, dot here uh, then I get uh, the red uh, data here and a fairly decent R squared. Uh, and in these students, they did more experiments, so they have more data points. And then this first point uh, becomes less important. Now you see that this is somewhat of, a, of an outlier here. Uh, and if we take away that, you instead get this equation with a much better r squared. The question is, why should we do that? Well, uh, so if we see here a equals 8300 approximately, and that should be the viscosity times Rm divided by area and the delta P. And B is then this 5.88 10, 10 to the power of 5. Viscosity, the filtration resistant, the concentration, and divided by 2 as A squared delta P. Uh, this means that if you put in all the data, you get an Rm that is 6.6 .6, 10 to the power of 10 per meter, which yeah, it's the right order of magnitude, so that seems correct. And alpha, you get that as 5.81 10 to the power of 8 meter per kilogram. So this is very easily filtrated. It's even less than 10 to the power of 9 here, right? So why is the first measurement a bit off? Uh, well, one question is, are the conditions constant initially? Uh, because we, we start with a pure filter, not a, uh, a cake on it, right? Uh, so in the beginning, it might happen that uh, things get through that shouldn't get through. And once we've built up a cake, we have a better uh, filtration process. So the first data point might actually be off for that reason. Another thing is that t divided by v at small v is sensitive to measurement errors in T and V. Uh, but if that was the only explanation, we would expect uh, this point to randomly appear above or below a line through the rest of the points. And this point actually 
typically occurs uh, or can be found above the line that goes through the other data points. So it's more likely that the conditions are not constant initially. Uh, so that's probably the reason.